grateful, profound. So <coughs> we need, we need, we need friends that are, that 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 love us, that's able to rebuke us in love. Amen. Amen. It's important, and it kind of we'll see the lesson today, the message today. We'll see some some good friends like that um, as we as we talk about today's message. Everybody doing good today? Mm -hmm. Amen. Good to see you. Good to see everybody today. Are y'all ready for God's word? Amen. Y'all ready? Yes. All right. So I'm just going to do a, a prayer just uh, as before, right before we, we bring forth the message. Yes. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just ask you to re reveal your son Jesus through, through the scriptures that we go through today, Father. Help us to just open our spiritual senses to allow us to see the goodness of Jesus Christ, Lord, and allow your scriptures to reveal him to us in a way that we've never seen it before. And it's in your son's name, in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. I know that uh, the title of today's message is probably going to spark some immediate interest among you. If you haven't seen the title of today's message, I'm going to say it so we'll all understand it. The title of today's message is How We Show Our Butts. How We Show Our Butts. All right? And I hope we don't get caught up on the title of the message, you know, but I want us to get caught up in the principles, the nuggets that we see as we go through the message. Amen? Amen. And I believe today's message will help us to, to cope with issues that are impacting our lives. And I pray that something that will be said here today, church, will speak to your spirit, each and every one of us in here. Something that is said today will speak to your spirit and cause change to come into your life for the better. Amen? Today we're going to be studying a passage of scriptures that speaks about a specific person in the Bible. This person that we're going to be talking about is Naaman. Naaman is an army commander for Aram or some that area of Aram is called Syria. Now Naaman, Naaman is a person that I believe that we can all relate to. And he's a person that we can all learn from. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a little spoiler alert, but if you're already in 2 Kings chapter 5, you probably already know what's gonna happen. Because in my title, in the subheading of my title, it says the healing of Naaman the leper. So spoiler alert, Naaman, Naaman has leprosy and he's going to get healed, all right? But there's something that happens. There are a lot of important pieces that happen in between those two points, all right? And that's the, that's the part that we need to make sure we grasp. There's so many divine nuggets in these scriptures that we're going to go through that we got to grab hold to. we got to make sure that we... We receive them and we and it's, and it's written on our hearts. Amen. So let's go. Are y'all there? Second Kings chapter 5, verse 1. We're gonna go all the way to verse 14 today. We're just gonna hit it. Boom. Verse by verse, precept by precept this morning. So we're gonna start, but we're gonna start with verse 1. And it's in, in, in the King James Version. I'm gonna read it from the King James Version, then I'm gonna go do, I'm gonna read it from the New International Version. So King James Version says, now name it. Captain of the host of the king of Syria was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. I'm going to read it from the New International Version. So you can get a, a different perspective. It says in 2 Kings 5 and 1, it says, Now Naaman was commander 
of the army of the king of Aram. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded because through him the Lord had given victory to Aram. It says he was a valiant soldier, but he had leprosy. Notice how the scripture says, through Naaman, the Lord had given victory to Aaron. Through Naaman, the Lord had given victory to Aaron. So let's, let's flip it back to us. As disciples of Jesus Christ, church, if we're supposed to reign in life, this comes by the Lord working through us and not by us. There's a difference between the Lord working through us and, and by us. Amen? Amen? When we get caught up in trying to do things for him and not through him, that's where we mess up. That's when we find ourselves struggling. That's when we find ourselves negating, nullifying the grace that he's made available to us. That's when we start to focus on doing our will versus his will. Amen? Now, now Naaman, we see here that Naaman is not an Israelite, but he's a Syrian. And he's the commander of the Syrian army, who during this time, just want to give you some perspective, during this time, the Syrian army is an enemy of, of, of Israel, all right? So, so the Syrians, this is what they would do. They would antagonize Israel. They would, they would raid their uh, crops. They would take their stuff, their, their valuables. They would take their people, and we'll see that. So there were enemies in the sight of the, 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 the Israelites. But Naaman was a great man in the sight of his master, the king of Syria. And he was highly regarded. He was highly regarded because of what he did, because of what he achieved, because of the victories that he won, because of the outcomes of his battles. Naaman was a good trooper, right? He was excellent at his job. But we see at the end of verse 1, it says that Naaman was a valiant soldier. He was a mighty man in valor. valor. And then we see our favorite word, but. But, right? But is a preposition. It transitions from one part of a sentence to another. Right? He was great, but he had leprosy. He was a man of valor, but he had leprosy. And at that time, this time in, in, in the world, when, when, he, when, when Naaman was living, leprosy was like one of the most feared diseases that somebody could have. It affected the skin. Y'all remember back in the 80s when, when acquired immune deficiency syndrome, AIDS, as we know as AIDS was out? You know, you know what the, the how 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 big, how much attention it got when that when it started taking over? That's how leprosy was back then. Some forms of leprosy were extremely contagious. Extremely contagious. And and the worst thing about it, it could lead to death. It was it was fatal. Now in the case of Naaman, it probably wasn't as lethal a case um, at that time, but it was a problem, right? It was an issue. So the scripture says that Naaman was great, but he was a leper. He had leprosy. Let's, let's look at it from our perspective. Let's look at it from our lives today. A lot of times, you know, the 
know sometimes we acquaint people with their victories and just focus on their victories and we don't look at their vulnerabilities or, or, or the issues that they have, their shortcomings. We, we tend to put the victories ahead of those shortcomings, don't we? We talked about last week on the importance of making divine decisions. And one of the ways we said we need to make divine sin decisions is by doing our due diligence, right? Doing our due diligence. Sometimes we, we assess a person strictly off of what we see in their victories. But we gotta look at a person, we gotta do our due diligence. We gotta, we gotta look at how they respond, not only in the sunshiny days, but we also have to look at that person. How do they respond when things don't go so well? You know what I mean? It's during those pressure moments. During those moments, oh, they got a deadline. It's, it's due today. You find out this morning and it's due today. Or they receive some bad news. And not, not only do we look at how, how the person responds, we also need to look, how do they treat their brothers and sisters under those pressure moments, huh? How, 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 do, how do we... How do we treat our brothers and sisters when, we, when we're under pressure? Church, I've noticed we have two eyes, right? We have two ears. We have two arms. We have two legs. We have two nostrils, right? We have one nose. We have one neck. And we have one butt. We have at least one butt, right? We have at least one butt. Amen? Let's not look at it from a little. I'm going to take you there. As a pastor, I can see your eyes. As a pastor, I can see your nose. I can see your ears. I can see your arms. I can see your neck. But I can't always see your butt. I can't always see your butt. You know, we church folk, church folk that's done growing up in the church, you know what we like to do? We like to play the game and we like to cover our butts. We do. We, we, we've learned how to cover our butts. You know how we cover our butts? This is what we do to cover our butt. We, we, we put on a fake smile when we come up in here. You know? We'll say, a, amen, hallelujah. We'll say some catchy, catchy Christian phrases. Why are they doing? Huh? We'll, we'll, we'll do that. We'll, we'll, say, we'll say a little paraphrase, a little scripture, we'll say, you know the Lord works in mysterious ways. We'll do a dance, we'll do a jig. And after the benediction is done, and we say, we do our little fellowship, and we get in our cars, we take off that stuff we put on. And, we, and when we left, we're left with our butts. We're left with our butts. And that's what's going on with Nate. Think about Nate. What is his job? He's a warrior, right? What does a warrior, when he goes to work, what does he wear? He wears armor, right? He has leprosy. Can you see his leprosy with his arm on? No, you can't. You can't see it. You can't see it. It covers his butt. So it's not exposed for other people to see. The key point we need to understand in church is this. We all have something we use to cover our butts. We all have something we use to cover our butts. So, so let me share some examples of this before we do. 
Oh, she is so great with the people. But she doesn't take time to take care of herself. Heavy, 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 heavy. Do we know folks like that? Uh, he's so great at succeeding in, in his work. But he struggles at being content. Here's another one. I'm a stellar. I'm a stellar employee. I'm a stellar manager. I'm wrecking it at work. I'm killing it. I'm killing it at work. But I'm neglecting my family. I'm balling out whenever it comes to doing the things, my hobbies. I'm balling out, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do when it comes to work. But when it comes to the things of the Lord, I'm a little slow for I'm a little slow for I'm not putting the same emphasis into that thing. He's great at saving money. He's great at saving money. He's got a pile of money in the bank. But he's not being a good steward and taking, using his gifts that the Lord or her gifts that the Lord has given and blessing those, blessing the Lord with them or his people with those gifts. Amen. Amen. One thing that I've noticed, one thing that I've noticed, church, is this. When we have a real encounter, a real encounter with the Lord, he will expose our butts. He will expose our butts. And it typically happens in an unlikely way. In a, in a way that we're not ready for it to happen. And we're going to see this occur with Naaman. And so today what we're going to do as we go through these verses, we're going to identify three ways that we show our butts. Three ways that we show our butts. First way we show our butt is through exposure. First way we show our butts is through exposure. Let's continue reading the, the verse. We're going to start at verse 2. Verse 2 says, And the Syrians had gone out by companies, and they had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid. And she waited on Naaman's wife, and she said unto her mistress, Would God my Lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. And one went in, and told the Lord, told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus said the maid that is of the land of Israel. So let's 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 break down what happens in these three verses. So the Syrian army, they've taken captive a, a young Israelite girl, alright? And she's serving Naaman's wife. She's naming she's Naaman's wife's servant, right? And she knows that Naaman has leprosy. She's exposed. He is exposed. She knows that he has leprosy. And, and, and then she says something to Naaman's wife. She said that if Naaman would see the prophet, God's messenger, in Samaria, that it, and that person is Elijah, he would cure him of his leprosy. Now, now, verse 4 is very important because we see that the word, the word that she said, 
got to name it, right? And he responded by going to his master to share what the Israelite girl had said. So church, we need to understand this. You see, we're not blessed just by hearing the word of God. We're not just blessed by understanding the word of God. We are blessed by the word of God that we obey and we act upon church. We are blessed when we take what the word of God is telling us and we apply it in our lives. That's where the blessing comes. And the sad part about this today, church, is this. We have so many babes in Christ today. Been in church all their life. And they haven't grown up. They have, and, and it's due to two things. First thing is a lack of knowledge. They haven't been taught. Second point is they know, but they choose not to do better. They're not applying the word of God. They have a lack of biblical application in their lives. And church, I'm going to tell you this. We don't need another disciple whose relationship with Jesus Christ is shallow. All right? We don't, we don't need another disciple of Jesus Christ whose relationship with him is shallow. It's just on the surface. It's a fleshly intimacy. Remember we talked about those levels of intimacy? The lowest level of intimacy is a fleshly intimacy. That's, we don't want that. We want to go to the highest level. That's a spirit. We want to know him on a spirit level. But you see, what we do, what we do, a lot of us do, is instead of exposing our butts, instead of exposing who we really are, and being transparent with ourselves and, and, and to others, this is what we do. We put on that armor, our spiritual armor. We put on that armor when we're out in public, right? And we hide our butts. We hide them so we can impress other folk. But what happens when we leave church and we go home? We're back feeling miserable. We're back feeling miserable. So think about Naaman. Naaman, they called Naaman, he was a great man, right? Naaman was a great man. So for him to go to his, his king to tell him this, it took some courage to do that, right? He's, he's a great man, he's had some great, it took some courage to do that, right? To go to his king and show his king his butt, right? It took some humility. Because what he's, what he's going to show them is an issue that for me during that time, if they found out you had leprosy, you couldn't even, you couldn't even hang out with everybody. They, they separated you. You went outside the city. You were considered unholy. It was difficult to do this. Because Naaman was considered to be such a great man. A man with so many victories, right? Sometimes, you know, I'm almost out right. Sometimes when we pray to God, a lot of times we, we, we talk up the victories, right? We talk up the things, oh yeah, I, I, put, I put that, I knocked that giant out. I knocked him out. Times we don't talk about the giants that's that's whooping our butts, huh? Mm -hmm. A lot of times we don't speak up about the things, we, and that's the stuff we need to talk to them about. There's some things that's really whooping our butts. We need to talk to the Lord about those things. The other thing about that that's 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 interesting about naming is this. And this, this, is, this, is, this shows some humility in this particular moment. This great man, Naaman, was willing to accept 
the advice of a young Israelite girl to go to his enemy nation to receive his healing. Does that, that don't even make sense to the natural eye, does it? She, he's listening to an Israelite girl to, to tell him to go to enemy territory so that he can receive his healing. Kind of hard for, for a man like that in his position to do something, but he was, he did. That took some humility. And the thing, the question I have to ask us is this. Church, are we willing to receive from God's messengers that he sends to us who we may think are smaller than us or less than us or less accomplished than us? I'm going I'm to I'm I'm tell you something. My young people, some of you may listen to me some of you may listen to somebody on TV, a famous athlete, or a famous movie star, or whoever. But you know something? You'll listen to them over than your parents. Mm hmm? You'll listen to them over your parents. And your parents are feeding you? I ain't feeding you. Your parents are feeding you? They put clothes on your back? They paying for your school? Yet you're going to listen to somebody that you don't even know, that doesn't even know you exist? I'm going to go to the adults. Sometimes we listen to the talk show hosts. Sometimes we listen to, the, to, the, to, 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 to worldly folks. When we got a godly person right in our house that's giving us the same wisdom. They're cooking our food. They're ironing our clothes. They're fixing stuff in the house for us. Y'all get where I'm coming from? Key point as I transition to the second way we show our butts. Key point I want to make. When we find a butt in our life, when we find something that consumes us that others can't see. It's typically exposed by personal experience. When we find a but in our life, it's typically exposed by personal experience. And how we respond to this personal experience will determine if we will be healed, if we will be delivered from it. The key word is experience. We said we started out with exposure. The next way we shut out, our show our butts is with experience. Everybody got that? So let's read verse five. And the king of Israel said, go to, go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him 10 talents of silver and 6,000 pieces of gold and 10 changes of raiment. So Naaman petitions the king of Syria. And the king of Syria says, go. He, tell, he says, go, do what you need to do. He says, I'm going to send you a letter to present to the king of Israel. All right? So Naaman, Naaman leaves Samaria. He doesn't just leave Samaria, but he leaves Samaria with some stuff. We, we hear it. So, 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 so Naaman not only brings his boys with him, but he's saying he's bringing some resources. He says 10 talents of silver. Y'all know how much 10 talents of silver is? 750 pounds of silver. This was what he rolling with. And 6,000 pieces of gold. They said that's about 150 pounds of gold. And 10 changes of raiment. Raiment is clothes. So he ain't coming in the hand. He coming with some stuff. 
But you know what? He's, he's acting. Naaman is acting like he normally does in his line of work. In this environment, in this political, in this warfare environment, there's a certain way that people interact. And it's like this. It, the, the same process goes today. I scratch your back. You scratch my back. That's how business is done. I slide a little something to you. You slide a little something back to me. Isn't that how business is being done in the world today? So he's doing what he's accustomed of doing. Right? So he, he's basing this healing almost like a transaction. I give you the stuff, you give me the healing, and I go back to the house. All right? But let's, let, let's see what happens next. We're in 2 Kings 5 and 6. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, now when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman, my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. Do we see what the issue is here? Do we see what the issue is here? He brought the letter to the king. However, it is addressed to the king instead of the person that's supposed to heal him. What did verse 3 say? What did the Israelite girl say? She said, if the Lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria, he would recover him of his leprosy. They're addressing the king. The king is not the person that's supposed to heal him. Y'all would play the listening game. You have, you got five, six people in the line and the first person tells the, the second person something, and then they relay it, they tell the third person, then they tell the fourth person, then they tell the fifth person, and then you see, you kind of compare what the fifth person says versus what the first person says. How, what happens a lot of time when, when you're going through different chains of communication? The meaning gets lost, doesn't it? It gets lost. The message got distorted. The prophet can heal Naaman, not the key. The key point for us to see from this message is this. Sometimes we look to the wrong source for our healing and for our deliverance, church. Sometimes we look to the wrong source. We look to other people. We look to ourselves. Instead of the Lord, who is our only solution. Why don't we just look to him? We're searching all over, that's the song said. Couldn't find nobody. Search high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you, Lord. So the question is, who are we going to for help? Psalms 121 and 1 says, I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, the Lord who made heaven and earth. The king doesn't have the faith to heal Naaman. As we will see shortly, the prophet Elijah does. He's the one with the faith that can heal. Amen? Amen. So let's, 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 let's continue. Let's watch how the king responds to Naaman who comes to him with his men, with his money, with his letter, and with his butt. Amen? And his hopes. He come, he's coming with hopes of getting healed, right? So let's look at verse 7. And it came to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter that he rent his clothes, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make a lie? Does this man thou send me to recover a man of his leprosy? 
Wherefore consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. Woo-wee! Now we see the king is showing his butt the name. <laughs> the king is showing his butt to name. He said, am I God? Do you think I'm God? Do you think I can take life and bring life and restore life? How many of you ever had somebody come to you and ask you to do something and you had no power to do it? You had no power. Had, there's a, there was a guy, there's a guy that used to work, he, he, uh, um, he passed away last year. His name was Steve Williams, same name as me. He worked at International Paper. He worked in IT. And when I first moved to International Paper, sometimes I, I the first time I got, we used to get each other calls or emails from time to time. And the first time I got a call from him, somebody was saying, man, my computer's down. I can't get on the internet. I need you to fix it. And I'm looking, I was like, in my, in, in my, and I didn't say it, but my, my mind was saying, I was like, what do you want me to do? I can't help you. Have you ever been in that moment when somebody came up to you and told you something they thought you had? And you're like, I can't, what do you expect me to do? This is what the king is doing. The king of Israel is, he's in that type of moment, you know? He, he can't, he doesn't have any control over what Naaman is trying to tell him. Who do you think I am? The king is saying, I'm not the one. I'm not the one. I can't, I can't hear you. The king is showing his butt. The king is showing his butt because he's been confronted with a situation that he can't fix. Let's look at ourselves now. When life unloads something on us, church, that we aren't equipped to handle. When life unloads something on us that takes a lot out of us, what happens is sometimes, sometimes we allow our past experiences to influence our current situation. We allow our past experiences to influence our current situation. They, they may not even, it may be apples and oranges. The king of Israel's past experience of Syria is what? What did, what did we say earlier about, about Syria and Israel? They were enemies. His past experience with Syria is they taking my stuff, they raiding my crops, they taking my people. That's in the back of his mind. So he, he's thinking, man, they're trying to pick a fight with me. Because of that, he shows his butt. Have, have we done that, church? Have we, because of when we face current situations, we allow those negative past experience influence us? Have we, check this out, have we ever offended somebody and when they responded back to us, they, their outrage was like 20 times greater than the offense that we had against them. You're like, dang, where that came from? Where did that come from? Our culture is full of outrage and anxiety. We see it in social media. Somebody hears something, first time they hear it, they already, let's march. This is a travesty. Church, we can't let, we can't be like the king. We can't inflect our personal, our present moment with past pain. We can't inflect our present moment with past pain from another experience. Because you know what that happens, you know, you know what happens when we do that? It hinders our ability to hear from the Lord. Y'all have been there. Something in the past has affected you, and then you see you see the young lady pass you by, and she don't speak. 
Oh, she ain't speak to me. Let her come back and ask me for something later. Watch what I tell her. Y'all know what I'm talking about. She knows she saw me early and she ain't speak. But sometimes, just maybe sometimes, church, the issue may not be with the other person. The issue may be with me. So before we go point that finger, let's, let's check ourselves first. Amen. Amen. Let's look at verse 8. Verse 8 says, And it was so, when Elijah the man of God had heard the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent the king, sent to the king, saying, Wherefore thou had thou rent, wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Notice this. The same event that triggered the king and caused him to show his butt by responding in fear triggered faith in Elijah, the messenger of God. Same event, different outcome. Because Elijah understands, unlike the king, that he is not a healer. But this is what Elijah knows. I know somebody. That is a healer. His name is Jesus. And he's a healer. He is a deliverer. He's a comforter. He's a friend. He's a father. He's whatever we need him to be, church. Where the king saw opposition, Elijah saw opportunity. <laughs> He's looking at it from a different lens, church. That's the kind of mindset that disciples of Jesus Christ need to walk in. Amen? Amen. Elijah has experience with the Lord. He has a relation, a personal relationship with the Lord. And those personal relationships have helped to build his faith. He knows personally and he has witnessed the power of God firsthand. In his life, through his life, and through the lives of others. He's seen, he's seen the Lord heal the waters. He's seen him multiply oil in the case with the, with the widow. He's seen the Lord speak to barren wounds. He's seen the Lord resurrect a child from the dead. Elijah has seen the Lord Yahweh do the impossible. And Elijah wants Naaman to experience God's power for himself. So this is the last way that we show our butts. The last way we show our butts is through expectation. The last way we show our butts is through expectation. When we Expect things to go one way, but it goes another way. We show our butts. Verse 9 says, So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elijah. So Naaman is at Elijah's house with his men, with his horses, with his silver, with his gold, with his butt, and he stands at the door of Elijah because he wants to be healed. We all want to be healed of some things that we cover up, right? I'm going to say something to y'all today. God is not trying to speak to your armor today. God is not trying to speak to your armor today. God is trying to speak to your butts. I need y'all to stay with me. God is not trying to speak to your armor. He wants to see the real you. He wants to speak to the real you. Let's read verse 
verse 10. And Elijah sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. Elijah sends the messenger to the door and gives Naaman instruction to wash in the Jordan seven times and his flesh will be cleansed. Not good. Why is it not good? That last way we show our butts. Expectation. If a great man comes to your door, you're supposed to give a great man a great greeting. Elijah's supposed to have been at the door. Not his messenger. You, you see what I'm saying? Great man. He was a great man. So a great man is expecting a great greeting. And then he's going to tell him, go to the to the Jordan River and wash that at the time. That muddy river? You want me to do what? Huh? Expectation results in naming showing his butt. Expectation resulted in naming Showing his butt. Verse 11 says, But Naaman was wroth. He was angry. And he went away and said, Behold, I thought he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. Ooh-wee! Earlier we saw the king show his butt about something we thought was above him. And now we see Naaman showing his butt because he believes something is beneath him. Huh? Huh? You, you want me to do what? No way. You see how that pride quickly draws up? When pride is in our hearts, church, you know what we try to do when pride is in our heart? We try to write our own prescription. Healing. Oh, all right. This is how I want God to deliver me. This is how I want God to heal me. This is how I want God to teach me. This is how I want God to direct me. And we see in verse 11 Church, there are two words, two words that stand between us. In our next level of faith, there are two words that stand between us and our peace. There are two words that stand between us and our freedom. There are two words that stand between us and our spiritual growth. There are two words that stand between Naaman and his healing. And that those two words are, I thought. I thought. I thought you would pay for my lunch because I paid for lunch last time. I thought you would say thank you when I gave you that. I thought you would be there for me when I was at the lowest point of my life. I thought you would be that father figure, a mother figure for me when I lost my father and I lost my mother. I thought you would be that perfect husband or that perfect wife. Great men, great women, we plan things out. We plan things out. We got a picture in our mind. This is how it's supposed to go down, right? But God says in Isaiah 55 and 8, he says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor my ways your ways. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. When a great man, when a great woman 
plans, when their plans don't go as they expected, you know what they do? They show their butts. No, this is how it's supposed to go down. I bring the gifts. You come out. You call on the name of the Lord. You put your hands on me and I get healed. That's what he thought. But that's not the way it happened. That's not the way it, it went down. Church, spiritual transformation doesn't happen on our terms. It happens on God's terms. We got to understand that. Amen. Verse 12 says, name is saying, or not, a bond, a forepore, rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel. May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in rage. Why? He said, why go to this dirty river that these Israelites talk of? That's much better and cleaner rivers around that I could go to and wash in. And he leaves in a rage, church. I'm going to tell you something. We talked about this when we were teaching on offense. The greater the, exp the expectation, the bigger the offense. The greater the expectation, the bigger the offense. He's offended at me. And he's about to walk away from being healed because of his expectation. His pride is blinding him from being healed. He went to the master. He, he went to the king of Syria. He went to the king of Israel. He went to Elijah. And then he went off when he should have went in. <laughs> he went off when he should have went in. Amen? He should have went into the joy. Let's look at what verse 13 says. And I know I'm running, but this is good. And his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? How much rather than when he said to thee, Wash and be clean. His servants are true friends. Just like you, you, you talked about this morning in, your, in the Proverbs verse that you did today. We need people that are not cosigners. We need people that's going to rebuke us and tell us, give us divine wisdom when we need it. That's what these people did. They can see what their master couldn't see. And they had the courage. I thank them. They had the courage to come to him and speak up and share some wisdom with them. They see their friends. They see their friends turning their back on an opportunity to be healed from leprosy because he didn't want to follow the instructions from the message of God, church. Mm -hmm. So they tell him. They say, my father, they go to him in respect. They, 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 they respect him as a person. They go to him in love. He said, if the prophet told you to do a great thing, would you have done it? Mm -hmm. Of course, Naaman. Naaman is a great man. He's known for doing great things. If he told him to go climb this tall mountain and find this pool in this cave that's somewhere buried in these mountains, would he have done it? Yeah, he would have done it. He's a great man. He, that's what I do. That's what great men do. That's what great women do. They said that how much more would you be able to do a small thing as this? So if he tells you to wash and be cleansed, why not do it? What do you have to lose? Mm. We come all this way. We didn't, we didn't haul all this stuff. What do you have to lose? Let's not waste this opportunity, church. Church, listen, why do we sometimes fight with God? Why do we sometimes fight with the people that love us, folks that want the best for us, to help us? Why do, why do we fight with them instead of receiving what they have? All the Lord is trying to do with us, he wants us to allow his power to operate in us, 
to through us, to heal us, to deliver us, to build up our faith. Amen? Amen. Let's look at the last verse, verse 14. Then went he, then went he down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child. And he was clean. I'm glad. After Naaman showed his butt, after Naaman went off, that he went into Jordan and he washed as Elijah instructed. He washed seven times. Not once, not twice, not but seven times just as Elijah told him. So that cleansing, that cleansing of that, that healing that took place, it was a process. And we need to look at that. He didn't just wash the first time and he was completely healed. It took some time to happen. That's how God operates with us when, when we talk about spiritual transformation, church. It doesn't necessarily happen immediately. And sometimes, it, don't, it may not look like it. It's, it's working from our natural senses at first. But that shouldn't keep us from continuing to get fed the word of God each and every day. Because in due season, that transformation is going to take place. And you're going to see it. Amen? The only way we can receive the things from the Lord is through surrender. Surrender is the key to our healing, to our deliverance, to our spiritual growth. It comes from surrender. And it's, a, it's amazing how in verse 14, how this great man, Naaman, was healed by becoming, his flesh was like a little child. So in order for him to be restored, he was restored like a little child. His skin was like a little baby skin mm -hmm. when he was healed. But we can't just look at it on the surface. Let's look at that spiritually. This is what the qualities that Naaman gained mm -hmm. through this experience, he gained that he, he gained the understanding of dependency. He realized he couldn't do things. Even though he was a great man, he couldn't do things by himself, church. He realized that his sufficiency, as the scripture says in 2 Corinthians, his sufficiency was not in himself. His sufficiency was only in God. Amen? He recognized this as well. Humility. Always be humble. Always be humble. Don't worry about what they, how, if it may seem beneath you or not, do it. And he was teachable. He had a teachable moment with these, with his servant. The, the servants taught him something. And he responded and listened to them. Versus saying, oh, they, they missed my service. I'm not going to listen to them. Those three things were key in that experience that helped him through his healing. Amen? So I want y'all to remember, we close them. Remember the three ways that we show our butts. Exposure. Experience expectation. Those are the ways we can show our butts. And let's learn from names and not allow these butts to prevent, to prevent us from receiving the great and precious, precious promises of God. Amen? Amen. The door of the church is open. God bless you. And may his grace supply you abundantly in Jesus' name. The door of the church is open.